I don't know if you guys can hear me. Uh, just trying to get this set up here. Many of us have been doing a lot of Zoom calls and Zoom meetings because we're practicing our physical distancing. And what I really want to do today is just review with you some of the things that we, that we could all benefit from during this pandemic crisis that we're all living through. It's really remarkable um, how we're going to talk about this for years to come. For those that don't know me, my name is Dan Witkowski. I am uh, here coming to you from my living room. Actually, I'm in my little sunroom off my living room on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, um, and thank you all for joining us today and trying to learn more on how you can help your health and how important your health is, especially during times like these. It was two years that after my father died, that I found his wallet. And this is his wallet. This is actually his wallet that he had, that he used just before he died. I found it when I was cleaning out my garage after I moved all the stuff from his apartment to our garage. You can see his Harvard ID card and you can see a picture of my father there. And this is his master card. But you can see that my father you know, was a heavy set man, wasn't really very healthy at all. And some of it wasn't even his fault. Some of it was really just all the circumstances that he had when he was even growing up. He was one of 13 children, 10 girls and three boys. And they lived in Chelsea, Massachusetts. They lived in a three room, not a three bedroom, a three room apartment. And they even had to share a bathroom down the hall. So when my father had the opportunity to join the service, and he was a 20-year veteran in the United States Air Force, uh, right through the Korean War, through some of the Vietnam War. But when my father was in the Air Force, he had everything given to him. He had an abundance of things that he never had as a kid growing up. And it really was like he hit the jackpot when he joined the United States Air Force. And he had food, he had um, snacks, he had coffee, he had cigarettes, and he smoked a lot of cigarettes. But it was really remarkable how those things came about because of the situation that he was in growing up. 15 years before my father died, he had quintuple bypass surgery. He had severe cardiac disease. And they had to go and harvest a, a, a vessel from his leg and, and open his chest with a big electric saw to expose his heart and then bypass that, those diseased vessels, five of them in his heart. Pretty dramatic. And two years before my father died, he had... The, the, his leg amputated just below the knee from complications of diabetes. But it was really two years after he died and I found this wallet. And when I opened his wallet, I found a piece of paper. And on this piece of paper was a list of the medications that my father was on. Lantus, Imidor, Cardizan, Lopressor, Simvastat, Clonidine, Lasix, Plavix, Allopurinol, Elevil, Combivent, Cosep. It went on and on, 17 medications deep. Now that hit me right between the eyes. Here, my father's being cared for by some of the greatest doctors in the world at one of the greatest hospitals in the world. And yet, he was so sick and never has anyone really approached him about his lifestyle because he never changed. Even having all these medications, even undergoing all those, I would call dramatic procedures, 
he still kept doing the things he was doing. And here I am, the son, the doctor, and I didn't even really have the training or the knowledge to help him any better than his doctors were helping him. Because those are the things that we learned in medical school. Those things, how to treat cardiovascular disease, how to treat diabetes with medications and procedures are what we had to learn. And those things are life-saving events. Don't get me wrong. When it's the right time to perform those and help somebody, they need to be done. But no one asked him his goals. No one asked him about his lifestyle. And here I am doing the same thing. I mean, raising a family, married to Pamela. Many of you know Pamela, my wife Pamela. And we're raising our six children, and I'm eating the same foods I was brought up on. And here I am feeding these toxic, toxic and even disease-promoting foods to my children. And then my practice. You know, I'm a trained obstetrician gynecologist. I take care of women. I deliver babies. Busy practice. And here I am seeing patients every single day. They're getting heavier. They're getting put on medications by their primary care doctor. And they're asking me. They're asking me about how long, doc, do I need to be on these medications? Why am I taking these medications? Why am I gaining weight? Is it my hormones? What is it? And I was getting frustrated. I said, you know, this isn't really what I signed up for. I was unable to answer their questions. I was unable to really care for the patients the way I wanted to care for them. So I went on a journey. Many of you know, Pamela and I traveled all over the country looking for something else. Didn't really know what it was. Didn't know if it was integrative medicine or functional medicine or preventative medicine. Didn't really know. But what I did know was I needed something else. I needed a change. And I happened upon lifestyle medicine because I was at a conference and I met a lifestyle medicine pioneer, one of the originators of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. His name is Caldwell Esselstyn. And he wrote a great book called How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And he was a surgeon from the Cleveland Clinic that had the same story I had. He, he was so frustrated as he was doing his breast cancer surgery, his thyroid surgery, that was his specialty, and his patients were still sick. His patients were still dying. And he couldn't figure out what it was, and he found out that the answer to cancer is nutrition. A big part of what we do in our lifestyle, the, the, the habits that we have, can either promote or even lower your risk for can cancer. And then he even applied it to heart disease because that's the number one killer of men and women. And he knew he would be able to influence more people if he focused on heart disease. And now look what's happening today. Now we have this pandemic, this coronavirus that is spreading all over the world, every single country. And all th these lifestyle medicine modalities, these evidence-based practices and habits that we can adopt will make such a difference for our health and will make such a difference in how our bodies respond to this, to this pandemic that we're living through. I am proud that I found lifestyle medicine and that I've become expert in all of these modalities and all of these habits and lifestyle changes that people can make and what the evidence is behind them. That I even became board certified in lifestyle medicine. And I even became a fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Proud to say I'm one of 30 members that are fellows of the American College, many of them the original founding members uh, that, of, of, a, of a college that is now greater than 1,400 members. So all from all over the country. So it really gives me a lot of pride to say, now I can start helping people. Now I can start helping my patients with these chronic illnesses. And if you think about what lifestyle medicine is, it's really based on six pillars. Its foundation is with nutrition. And that nutrition being this whole food, plant-based nutrition. That means eating foods as nature gave them to us, not the processed foods, especially the highly processed foods. 
It's physical activity. And I try to stay away from that word exercise because I don't, it really isn't about going to a gym or doing something that is so structured. Yes, working out in the gym can make you stronger, can make you even attain goals that you want. But if it's just physical activity, like going out for a walk where you can walk and talk, but you're huffing and puffing a little bit that you can't sing, that's going to be great. That's really the type of physical activity we want, just to be active in your life. If it's gardening you like to do, like many of us are doing now in the spring, that we have more time with this COVID virus, coronavirus that's going around. Doing things like that are really, really helpful. And then it's about getting adequate sleep. Sleep, so important for that restorative factor of your body being able to get itself better again, finish the day, um, and get ready for the next day. Let your body just recoup. And there's lots of evidence that shows that there are habits that we can have that will improve the restorative sleep that we, that we attain. And so lifestyle medicine is really very wrapped around sleep and all of those habits that we can adopt. And then the, the toxins that we expose ourselves to, whether those toxins are the more prevalent or the ones that we see all the time, like smoking cigarettes, you know, drinking too much alcohol, or even um, some of the toxins that we find in foods because of some of the preservatives and some of the highly processed foods that we have on the shelves in our supermarkets. Those are things that we can do. And then really um, finding the, that community, finding those, those groups of people that are like-minded, that can even keep you accountable. It could be family members to, to get you started, but it could even be the community where you work, where you live, but that bond that you make with people, that bond when you have common goals that you're trying to attain, and you can have multiple communities, some at work, some at home, but those bonds really enable you to stay healthy and really watch yourself so that you can be there for them and they do the same so that they can be there for you. So that community is so, so important. So when we look at lifestyle medicine and you apply it then to what we're going through now in this lockdown with this coronavirus these all these habits apply if you examine or look at the data that we're all getting on tv at the number of deaths and i want to make this perfectly clear that this virus is deadly this is new to us we haven't humans haven't seen this virus and people are comparing it to the flu virus saying that, oh, it's just another flu virus. Well, no, that's not true. When you just look at the data, it's twice as deadly as the flu virus. The flu over the flu season, which it spans about six months, usually takes about 20 to 30,000 lives a year. This coronavirus, this, this SARS-CoV-2 virus that we're battling right now has already taken 50,000 plus lives in half the time in three months. Twice as deadly. So pay attention, do what they say, stay with your physical distancing. If there's things that you can do to really prevent it, yes, washing your hands has been shown to be number one, get that virus off of you, decrease the spread, and don't touch your face. I mean, that's where it enters our body, is through our nasopharynx, mouth, nose, eyes, is where that virus likes to get in. So don't touch your face, wash your hands, and then what else can you do? Lifestyle medicine. Because over 80% of the people that are the sickest with the coronavirus are those that are even dying from the coronavirus infection, the COVID infection. All 80% of them have the common lifestyle medicine, chronic diseases that we're fighting, that we're helping people with with, with lifestyle medicine. Those include cardiovascular disease and even hypertension by itself, increasing your risk for severity of the coronavirus. Or um, having obesity, if you're overweight, huge problem with the coronavirus because it changes your whole immune system. It changes the way that you battle or even the way all of your um, inflammatory markers are being secreted or being suppressed in so many different ways. Obesity is a huge factor with this virus. Uh, the other things are chronic diseases like chronic lung disease or chronic kidney disease and even diabetes. Now all of those conditions are very well not only treated 
and prevented, but even reversed with some of the lifestyle modalities that we just talked about. That nutrition, that physical activity, that toxin uh, avoidance, that sleep, um, the, the, um, the, the community that you form um, so that you can really help bond and really help keep each other accountable. And when you look at what the most important things you can do to fight chronic disease or even fight this coronavirus, if you try to you know, um, say what's number one, number one that's, that's been shown in the literature is sleep. Sleep is so important. And those sleep habits, making sure that you get that time of the day and you regulate it. Make it so you have a regular time that you go to bed and a regular time that you wake up. And then when you sleep, make sure that you turn the blue lights off or wear blue blocker glasses. If you have to either be on your computer or you're watching a program and it's within an hour if you wanted to go to sleep. Doing those things, because blue light will decrease the melatonin production from your pineal gland in your brain that helps you fall asleep, that hormone that helps you fall asleep. And if you don't allow the blue light to hit your retina, you will not suppress that melatonin. So that's how that blue light thing works. So that's really important. Sleep, number one. Number two is nutrition. And when you really think about nutrition, yes, plant-based is the way to go. The more plants you eat, the healthier you'll be and the healthier your immune system is going to be. Uh, number three is physical activity. And then number four are the supplements. So that's why I got on this um, webinar today uh, with this Wellness 101 because I wanted to share with you what are some of those nutritional foods that you can really focus in on to help boost your immune system, to help your immune system stay the healthiest it can be so it can fight this virus and even fight other viruses or other illnesses, some of these chronic illnesses like we just talked about, the cardiovascular disease, the cancer, the obesity, and the diabetes. It's been shown really to help those four, and those are the big four killing over 80% of Americans. So if we think about the foods, um, a colleague of mine from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, Joel Furman, back in 2011, published this uh, New York City bestseller called Super Immunity. Imagine that back in 2010, 2011, Dr. Furman was trying to help people boost their immune system to help protect them against this. And Joel Furman, uh, a doctor out of New Jersey, a uh, family practice doctor, um, really uh, found ways that he could focus you to get your immunity at its best. Uh, one of the things he helps people with is an acronym that you can just use yourself. He calls it G-BOMBS, G-BOMBS. G-BOMBS, the acronym stands for the different foods that you should try to get in your life, like green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables, number one, the highest nutrient density. And if you even think about some of the biggest animals of the world, some of those that produce the, the beef that we eat, what do they eat? the cows, they love to eat grass. That's what they eat, hay, grass, grain. They don't like grain. They, you know, they, 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 everyone's feeding them corn or feeding them wheat. They don't want to eat that. They want to eat the green leaves, the grass. And that's what makes them healthy, just like it makes us healthy. The most nutrient dense, and if you look at other animals like giraffes and elephants and rhinoceros, they're all herbivores and they all love to eat these green leaves. Not only are they packed with lots of nutrients, they also have nitric, um, very high in nitrates, and nitrates help us form the nitric oxide in our blood vessels to keep our blood vessels healthy and enable us to avoid things like hypertension. Again, a risk factor for more severe disease and even death with the coronavirus. So the green, the G and G bombs is green leaves. The B is the beans. And whether those beans are black beans or whether those beans are kidney beans, it almost doesn't matter. But another friend of mine, Dr. Greger, who wrote the book, How Not to Die, has even told me that, has even told me those who eat the most beans live the longest. And Dan Buettner has even said that with his studies with the blue zones, that those people that are live in those blue zones, that live over 100 regularly, but don't just like we in America live over 100, most of the time very dependent on people. Um, many times we are 
um, either in nursing homes or healthcare facilities, these people are out riding their bikes. These people are out gardening every day or, or, or mingling with their friends. Um, in the blue zones, they eat an average of one cup of beans a day. So again, like Michael Greger says, those who eat the most beans are gonna live the longest. So G-bombs, greens, beans, and then the O stands for onions. And onions um, are part of those alum uh, vegetables like garlic, onions, and they provide a lot of not only fiber in your life, but those compounds are very cancer-fighting compounds. They really help our body's immune system uh, be supercharged so that it can go and fight not just viruses or bacteria, but also it can also fight things like, I got my onion, I got my garlic. Um, it can also fight things like cancer. And uh, they've even um, really used a lot of these types of foods in many studies to see how they do that. The M stands for mushrooms. And again, these fungi, and it almost doesn't matter which one again that you eat, one isn't better than the other because they also have co uh, components in them that are very cancer fighting. Um, they've even done um, uh, medical or peer reviewed studies that have tried to demonstrate that these mushrooms are, are um, cancer fighting and, and they've really had great results with them. So G bombs, the G for the greens, the B, the G for the greens, the B for the beans, the O for the onions, the M for the mushrooms, the B again for the berries, like strawberries. Or I even like, sometimes I keep a lot of frozen berries on hand, whether you're gonna use them for a smoothie or they defrost really quickly too when I put them in my oat bowl in the morning. Uh, whether it's blueberries or blackberries, and I just mix them in with my oats and my nuts and seeds and, and my soy milk or my oat milk, and, and it makes a wonderful breakfast bowl that start my day with lots of energy and lots of nutrient-packed foods. And then the last thing uh, for g bombs, the S stands for seeds, seeds and nuts, things that are really great for you, like flax seeds or chia seeds. You know, these uh, items not only are packed with lots of great fiber, but they also have a lot of great omega-3 fatty acids in them too. And I'll talk more about omega-3 fatty acids later, but they're really so important for our body's immune system to decrease the inflammation in our body and allow our immune system then to work so much better. And nuts, you know, probably walnuts being the ones that have the most nutrient density with the amount of omega-3s that they have in them and other, other um, types of fats that really help our body survive well. So it's really nutrition, pretty simple, eating the foods the way nature gave them to us, but there's still many um, ways that we can help ourselves, as I said, the sleep, the nutrition, the physical activity, doing those 150 minutes a day. It doesn't even have to be that you have to do it 30 days, uh, I'm sorry, 30 minutes over five days. It can even be in short bursts. You don't have to do all 30 minutes at the same time. If you only have 10 minutes, say, and you do a burst exercise for 10 minutes three times a day, that will also uh, enable you to fulfill those physical activity requirements that you really wanna do that's been shown uh, in the medical literature to really make a difference in your health, in your immune system. So after physical activity, then what do we have? We have our supplements. Why supplements? You know, one of the things about supplements is that it's never ever, we're never gonna get enough of the nutrients in the foods today that we think we're gonna get. 50 years ago, 70 years ago, the food was more nutrient dense and that's been shown in many studies, in many nutritional journals, that it's a, even up to, 40% less. So even though you're eating your greens and your beans and your G bombs, supplementing will really ensure that you'll be able to gain the benefits from some of the um, components of, what, of the supplements so that your body can function at its best. And at the cellular level, there are so many different uh, reactions going on in our cells that at the cellular level, if you can support that, it not only will help you know, with your heart disease or with obesity or even with diabetes, 
but it would also, more importantly, help your immune system. And your immune system is so important for cancer fighting. Your immune system is so important for um, infection fighting, whether that infection is a bacterial infection or like we're up against now with this viral infection, this coronavirus that we're, that we're battling. Um, if you want, uh, as I go forward, uh, if I talk about any supplements, I just want to make it clear that everything I say is not, has no intention to diagnose or treat any diseases. Uh, this, um, this is just me talking about supplements, and I'm not here to talk about how to diagnose or treat. But if you focus in on what supplements are really important for general health, and then maybe we can talk about a few uh, specific supplements for a pandemic like this where we're fighting a viral disease or a viral uh, infection that we're really not very good at, that we really don't understand yet, it will be good to get the basics down first. So what do I call my three non-negotiables? Really for everybody. What they include are a multivitamin. Why do I like multivitamins? Multivitamins are because they give you all of the extra uh, vitamins and minerals. Um, sometimes many of those vitamins are antioxidants that you could be missing in your diet because the food isn't like, like it was 50 years ago or that you just, we, you know, we're not that good. Sometimes we just don't eat well every single day. And this will ensure that your body's getting what it really needs so it can carry out all those reactions and be healthy and fight infection or fight a cancer cell that we might have. And why do I like this particular multivitamin? It's only because it has so many of the great um, vitamins and minerals that we need, but specific for this pandemic, specific for fighting viruses and improving your immune system, it has great amounts of vitamin C. Like vitamin C, uh, it has 150 milligrams, which is well over 100% uh, of what the recommended daily allowance is. So yes, you should be getting your vitamin C in the fruits and vegetables that you're eating, primarily the citrus uh, but, uh, fruits that, that have high levels of vitamin C, but even still, other fruits and vegetables have vitamin C. As a matter of fact, a little gee whiz fact, if anybody wants to know, the number one source of vitamin C in the world is potatoes because there is potatoes and vitamin, uh, there is vitamin C in potatoes, but not everybody has a chance to always eat um, uh, oranges or can afford to eat oranges all over the world, but so many people eat potatoes and that's a, another source of vitamin C. So vitamin C, especially in this pandemic, has it really been shown that vitamin C, even in high levels, can fight a virus? Well, some of those studies are going on now uh, and they're not, you know, all the data is not back yet, but the studies we've done in the past show that if you have a viral illness, loading up on vitamin C isn't going to do you any good. There's no difference on whether the severity of the, uh, of the, um, of the viral illness or the duration of the viral illness is changed in any way. But what is important are the people that get vitamin C in their bodies or in their diet or using supplements every single day that's where it makes a difference. So if you're not taking any vitamin C and you're eating a poor diet and all of a sudden you get sick and you start you know, trying to eat lots of vitamin C, that's not gonna help you. It really is uh, that you have to take vitamin C every single day. And it also has vitamin D, vitamin D3 too, the kind of active vitamin D that we want. And it is um, at a thousand international units in in our multivitamin from Nutrimetrics or from the Isotonics line. So that's a key, another key for, um, for this pandemic because vitamin D, you know, not only has it been shown that it, there's a vitamin D receptor in every cell of your body and it can really make a big difference when you're talking about your immune system and how healthy those cells are and how well they can perform, you really wanna have adequate vitamin D levels. But for any viral illness, whether it's the flu or even this new flu that we're trying to fight, people that have low vitamin D have been shown to get sicker and have prolonged sickness. So not only are they sicker for a longer time, but they're also more sick with more symptoms. And now with this new virus, even that risk for death. 
So vitamin D levels need to be checked. We should all have our primary care doctor or whomever you see check your vitamin D levels. I saw one uh, time there was a, um, a doctor that said, there's a way that if you take your knuckles and you push, not too hard, but you push on your sternum and you get a lot of pain in that bone because that's a sensitive area. And, you know, not to push, but push moderately hard. If you get a lot of pain that you, get, you can't tolerate, that's very highly correlated to low vitamin D levels. And although many docs or many labs say that vitamin D should be above 30 uh, as, as a level, that most docs and the literature supports that it should be closer to 50. So when I check people's vitamin D, I try to get them above 40. Above 40, you know that's going to make a difference with their immune system. You know that's going to make a difference with their bone health. And you know that's going to make a difference in their cardiovascular health. All those things. So if 1,000 international units isn't enough that's provided in your multivitamin, then you can always add. You can always take an additional vitamin D supplement. Um, and then the vitamins, the B vitamins that are here too. And B vitamins are just so important for our nerve health, for all our cell health, for all the methylation that goes on in our bodies, you know, the way that we detoxify all the byproducts from all the reactions in our cells, the way we create active uh, components in our cells that, that function to their best, you need a lot of B vitamins. The other thing that's in here is magnesium. Magnesium is so important also for muscle health, for brain health, and just even for that calming effect that it has uh, on our nerves and on our muscles. And lastly, zinc. And zinc is so important, especially against viruses. Zinc has been shown as, uh, for respiratory viruses, especially like this coronavirus uh, is, uh, to really be deadly to that virus. So zinc uh, is many times difficult to get in your, in, your, in your diet. You get a lot of it in nuts and seeds, like pumpkin seeds are really, really high in zinc. And so taking the supplement, like a multivitamin, will give you that extra zinc that you can need, that you need to make your, to enable your body to function at its best. My second non-negotiable is an antioxidant. So not only just do you need multivitamins, but you need antioxidants. And the, it, 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 there are so many different kinds of antioxidants. I mentioned the vitamin C being an antioxidant. There's also vitamin E that's in the multivitamin that's an antioxidant, but there's no more powerful antioxidant than OPC3. These bioflavonoids are 30 to 50 times more powerful than vitamin C or vitamin E. Um, and the OPC3 of those oligomeric proanthocyanidins, all those bioflavonoids, and they, the way that they're, that they're formulated in here, given us five of the most, or really the three, that's why it's called OPC3, three of the most powerful known, but a, a blend of five different bioflavonoids to really help not only with heart health, with blood flow, but with vascular health. I mean, that's what we all know the most about, but even helping with fighting viruses, enabling ourselves to even be stronger, to even be able to fight cells that, are, that, are, that have a viral invasion in them, that these bioflavonoids will really help that oxidation process be antioxidants and even help ourselves fight those infected cells um, and even kill off viruses directly themselves. So after a multivitamin, an antioxidant is really my number two non-negotiable. And number three in my non-negotiables for overall general health, these three things everybody needs to have is my omega-3s. Omega-3s have been controversial in all the literature because there's been so many publications that even though it's part of our heart health line, that it says that there aren't uh, really any cardiovascular, I should say, no heart benefits, no heart disease benefits from omega-3s. Okay, but you just don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so there's no heart benefits. What about all the other things that, that omega-3s uh, actually give us? Like, um, you know, most of us in, that eat the standard American diet never get enough omega-3s in our diet. Our diet is so laden with omega-6s, and omega-6s cause lots of inflammation in our, in our bodies. But the omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. 
our omega-3s are the opposite of those sixes. And that ratio of how many sixes versus threes you have really gives your body that inflammatory state. With more omega-3s, you get less inflammation, you're more anti-inflammatory, you're healthier and your body performs better. Whether it's your muscles, whether it's your heart, whether it's your immune system, but in the lowering your inflammation is key. The other thing, uh, besides inflammation, it's been shown that omega-3s even help to uh, fight against the progression of cancer. So again, another, another chronic disease that so many Americans, you know, and right now it's the, still the number two killer of Americans in the country, uh, heart disease being number one. Um, but it's not just, you know, the heart health, it's the anti-inflammatory health. It's the cancer uh, preventing. It's all the brain health. Our brains are, you know, 60 to 70% DHA, one of the omega-3s that we find in omega-3s. It helps with eye health, visual health, because our, our eye, eyes are really made up of greater than 70% omega-3s. So why throw out the bath, bath uh, the baby with the bath water just because it doesn't, it hasn't been shown that there are great cardiovascular benefits <coughs> Excuse me. Cardiovascular benefits. There are so many other health benefits with omega threes. So that's my my three <coughs> non-negotiables: my multivitamins, my antioxidants, and my omega threes. Now, if you want to improve your vitamin D, for example, because as I said, it, showed, it has been shown that people that are fighting the, um, the um, flu virus or any other colds, uh, that people that have low vitamin D need to increase their vitamin D, you might have to add some vitamin D. You might have to you know, <clears throat> take some extra vitamin D. Our vitamin D comes with a serving of 5,000 international units. That will really boost your vitamin D. And many studies have even shown that people that take 5,000 international units a day still might get their vitamin D levels up above 50 or above 60 even, even approaching 100, but it's still safe. No toxic effects um, with them that, with, that take 5,000. Now, people that take more at 10,000, 25,000, and they get significantly above 100, those levels, that could have some detrimental effects, and that's not advised. But if your vitamin D is low, and so many times when I screen patients for their vitamin D level, I see them in the teens uh, or low 20s. And again, again, it should be above 40. So then I recommend that 5,000 that they would take over a two-week period every single day or even up to a month, depending on how low it is, and then I recheck the level. So the most important thing is you got to know your number. You got to know where you're where you stand, and then when you make the adjustment, you got to recheck the number so that you know you're there, and then you can maintain. And usually around this area uh, where I, where we live in Boston, uh, around 2,000 international units a day seems to be the the sweet spot where people will maintain their vitamin D levels um, at 40. And then also for this uh, time of the pandemic. Adding a probiotic would be, you know, another supplement that could make a significant difference. We all know that our immune system is so closely related to our gut health and the health of that microbiome of the bacteria that live in our gut. And there's no better way but to support that bacteria with more good helper bacteria. And a good probiotic will have uh, at least 10 billion colony forming units, even up to 20 billion colony forming units, but more importantly, that they give you an array, uh, you know, different players that will go and help the gut uh, be better, be, be, a, be a better environment to support the growth of the other bacteria. There's about 100,000 different strains of the, the trillions of bacteria that live all over our bodies, but there's about 100,000 strains that live in our gut alone. And so taking like, say, one or two different strains isn't going to influence that 100,000 strains as much as the 10 that, or that you would see in this um, uh, probiotic, the probiotics 10 that we have as part of the Nutrimetrics line. Uh, 
and it gives 10 different ones that function a little bit differently, but they all are supportive of all the bacteria that live in our gut. A healthy microbiome means a healthy immune system. That gut is really where we get the most exposure for, of the outside world. And so if our immune system, if that gut isn't healthy, if that gut isn't balanced, if that bacteria in there isn't helping us to the, to the best they can, then it really won't be able to do that. Um, and then um, those would be the five that would really be great for everyone, but also be great during this COVID crisis. And when you talk about women's health, because I'm a gynecologist and obstetrician, I'm gonna talk about women's health. What is so unique about women that they need different supplements. I mean, then women are unique. Women are the CEOs of the family. I mean, no one has more stress. No one has more lost sleep thinking about all the things that they have to think about, with, whether it's with their, their own personal lives, but also with the family, with their work, with their friends. And how do you, how do you manage all that at the same time? Well, most women's supplements focus on hormonal imbalances that are challenging to most, to many, many women, whether it's PMS or menopausal symptoms. And so they focus on that and they provide like supplements to help balance those hormones or balance those stressors. And we have those two. In our women's line, we have two great ones from the Prime line, Prime Feminine, which jumps off the shelf in my office with its... Uh, 10 botanicals and it's uh, 11 vitamins and minerals that really help support uh, women um, with their um, hormonal fluctuations, whether it's their menstrual cycle and PMS or it's menopausal symptoms after their menopause. And we have the prime libido, uh, female libido support formula too, which is uh, five different uh, botanicals and one essential amino acid to really help with that sexual desire and sexual performance and sexual satisfaction that sometimes women are struggling with with their hormonal changes. But more importantly, what we have is the Essentials Women's Health. The Isotonic Essential line uh, has a woman's health uh, formula that is so unique. Not only is it you know, um, isotonic, but it's also individual convenient packets that makes it simple to get everything you need. And what did they combine in this formula? They took everything that a woman needs, uh, whether it's uh, cognitive health, uh, get rid of uh, that, all that fog brain that the hormones can sometimes cause, or even if it's cardiovascular protection. So what's in here in, in the essential health primarily are B vitamins. The B vitamins are very, very high, whether it's the folic acid, or the biotin, which really helps with skin, nails, hair, um, whether it's um, uh, the other B vitamins for the nervous system to really help calm their, their stress or even uh, get them to, to even get that clarity in their brains. So B vitamins, a key component uh, to here, plus minerals like calcium and magnesium. And we talked about how calcium and magnesium are so important for muscular health but magnesium too for even neurologic health and brain health. And one of the key components in women's essentials is the magnesium glycinate. And that glycinate, that amino acid, really helps it not only get absorbed in the gut so much better without a lot of uh, complaints, gut complaints that people get with magnesium uh, with their stools and all, but it also helps cross the blood brain barrier better and gets to the brain to really help magnesium get there to help the nerves even relax or function better. And in the glycinate, after it cleaves off the magnesium within the brain, even helps suppress the excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine or, nor, nor, or epinephrine, which really helps us calm down, really helps us get that restorative sleep too that many of us are missing that will really help our immune system uh, in the end. Um, the other big thing is the vitamin D, and the vitamin D is also at 1,000 international units here. And it has iron, and the iron is in a micronized form. That iron in its micronized form called sun active, you know, using again a branded form of a, of a product within a product, 
so that you can ensure that you get the right amount, the amount that you say you're getting, because that company stands behind their product. But this micronized iron, again, helps with absorption, but also any of the GI distress that, that people get when they take iron. And then it has the antioxidants, a nice blend, very similar to the OPC3 blend with the five bioflavonoids. And we know what that does for not only immune health, but for cardiovascular health, blood flow, skin health, you know, to really give that, 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 that blood flow to the skin, to keep that skin you know, looking young and, and being, you know, the skin is our, our largest organ in our body. It has so many functions, you know, making the vitamin D, but also detoxifying our body from different toxins and different products that our body even makes during our lives. So skin health, so important. And that's where the uh, antioxidants really come in to this product, really with some of the desires. And then it has hyaluronic acid here too. And hyaluronic acid, as we know, really helps support the connective tissue. So you get the cell health through the blood flow and the antioxidants, and then you get the connective tissue support with the hyaluronic acid. And it also helps with the degradation of the collagen under our skin so that our skin you know, looks more vibrant and looks younger and, and really has that flexibility and not all the wrinkles that really shows. So it's a very unique product in a very unique delivery system that really answers all the problems all the issues that are so unique to women as they go through their lives with all of their different fluctuations. So if there was really a product that really answers the question for women as to what would be the best, it would be the Isotonics Essentials Women's Health. So those are the products that um, are at the top of that pyramid. Remember we said, how are you going to make your immune system the best, the best for your life? We can talk about coronavirus, and people can be afraid of coronavirus. But coronavirus, although it's twice as deadly as the other flu viruses we've seen, if you compare it to other lifestyle diseases that are killing 80% of Americans, the heart disease, the, the um, cancer, the diabetes, the obesity, over 80% of Americans, I know it's a slower death. And it's not so, you know, uh, dramatic. Uh, but, you know, you, we do hear at times the younger people, people long before their, the time they should go having heart attacks, whether they're 40 years old, 50 years old, long before they should go. And it's all those lifestyle choices that we make that leads to that heart disease. So those kinds of disease states that are killing everybody are so much greater than what we're, what we're, we're hearing about with coronavirus. If I heard a doctor try to put it in perspective, saying that, yes, this coronavirus is deadly. This coronavirus is like killing a jumbo jet, one of the big 747, 600 passengers every single day in our country. So in the past three months during this F uh, pandemic in our country, it's as if we've lost a jumbo jet every day. And when you compare that to heart disease, we lose four jumbo jets a day in heart disease. And heart disease is completely preventable if you look at lifestyle and you look at what you're eating, how you're moving, how you're sleeping, what toxins you're exposed to, how you're managing your stress, and what kind of community do you have support? So it really comes around to really taking good care of yourself not only to prevent these chronic diseases, but boost your immune system and get yourself well. I'm glad you guys all took a time today to, to, to review some of these things, spend some time with me, let me share some of the thoughts and some of the knowledge that I've acquired through all of the reading of some of my favorite books with some of my great colleagues and what I've learned with some of the food and how we can cook it. If you have any more questions about anything we talked about, or you want to even order some of the products that you saw today, get in touch with the person that invited you to this webinar, and they will help you get these products or, or even find out more about them. They can send you the science. They can send you the ingredients, because that's what I love about this company, too. It's full disclosure. 
on the website, you can find all the ingredients. There's no proprietary blends. They will tell you how much of each ingredient because that's the amount that's been shown in the scientific literature that makes a difference. So that's why it's easy to expose it because we're giving you the right amount. So if you need to know anything else about that, just ask the person that invited you here. Go on the website too. You can find out a lot of information there. And then if you want to either email me or, or send me uh, a, a message, you know, I'm, I'm going to look through the chats again and try to answer as many questions as I, as I have. I don't know if there's any questions in the chats now that I can answer. Yeah, you can, you can always email. Yeah, you can always email me if you have any questions. Info at um, danielwitkowskimd.com. All one word. So it's info at danielwitkowskimd, all one word, dot com. And that way you can, you can email me and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, that you have or any kind of issues that you want to talk to me about. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope that everybody's staying safe. Keep following the rules, and if we do that, we'll all be well, and we'll all get through this pandemic. I'll see you soon.